Hi, this is Tim, and welcome to Talks with Tim. And today's question is from Carol, who asks, what are the obstacles you must overcome to be a UL508A industrial control panel manufacturer? You know, I'm really debating on doing a series about what it takes to become a UL panel manufacturer. And questions like this are really what really want, makes me want to do it because what I find the biggest obstacle to becoming one is misinformation out there about what it actually takes. So if I went back in time to the day before I contacted UL to begin the process of being a UL508A control panel manufacturer, then most of what I thought was required was absolutely wrong. And there's a few reasons for that. I think a lot of control panel manufacturers make it out to be a lot tougher than it is. And I don't want to go down a rabbit trail of why, but yeah, it's not that tough. And also, I think this is one time that even I'll say technology, or mainly the fine button in a PDF, has muddied the water so much. Because I, I see people citing code. I mean, they do it in my videos all the time. You know, I, maybe I did something wrong. I mean, right there. I, every time I post anything with a control panel open, oh, well, you know, you got the control panel open, that's safety violation. And that's cool. I get that part. But then they always post the wrong code. I mean, it's just unreal. I, I'm getting ready to do one on wire colors. And I just, I'm almost excited because as soon as I post it on what wire colors you should use in a control panel, the code citing is going to be unreal and people say, no, Tim, this and this and this and this, and they're all going to be citing the wrong code. And so that's what I really see is the big obstacle is this misinformation. And some of it is maybe intentional, mainly, you know, control panel manufacturers kind of want to make it that, you know, it's more complicated than it is. And then you have such a part of it, though, that is just a very muddied water of looking at the wrong code because a lot of the code requirement are for very specific situations. And if you're not in that particular situation, then none of that actually matters. Anyway, the first step, if we were gonna do a video on the first step to becoming a UL 508A control panel manufacturer, is to give UL a call. And that really was not nearly as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. I Googled UL, which if you didn't know, their website's ul.com. And I browsed through there and I found the industrial control panel manufacturer, which later on I found it is actually UL508A. That's what you're talking about when you say that. And there was a number there and I called, and I guess when I even called them, I thought there was gonna be this insane process that was near impossible to navigate. But the person on the line was super friendly. I told them, hey, here's what I'm looking to do. Here's what I do now. You know, I build panels and I think I'm building to UL standards but I really want to go that extra step and become UL certified so that I can put my label on like I should. And they really laid it out. Here's what you have to do. Here are the steps that you're gonna have to go through. I mean, it was laid out very well. They're, I mean, they are, they're a top-notch organization. Now, it is not pay your money and you get to put a sticker on. There are a lot of steps before you ever write a check to them because you are, you are saying with this label that you are making a device that meets their standards that will keep someone safe or keep something from burning down. And this is a serious thing. This isn't just slapping a sticker on a panel, but it wasn't nearly as difficult once I finally made that call. Now, it was not very fast either. There are a lot of procedures. There are a lot of I's that got to be crossed and T's dotted or no. I think you go the other way with that, don't you? Yeah, there's a lot of T's that got to be crossed and I's dotted. But there are a lot of procedures there. And every step of the way, though, if you have a question, just ask them and they will answer it. But then there is some training you have to go through. And the training is difficult. It is very involved. And before I even went through there, I felt, well, and I was, I was a good control panel manufacturer and I was a safe control panel manufacturer, but I didn't understand the why a lot of times of why I did things. And 
that is one thing they take you through is the that why factor and you know sometimes it's like wow i i just didn't even realize why we did that but the first obstacle is definitely make that phone call and there is no charge to make the phone call so if you're thinking about it make the phone call and maybe you decide it's not for you but you've only lost some time talking to them to figure that out and i think you'll find that it's worth the while uh, they have definitely made our quality better. They actually have saved us money. And that's something that I may get into in a video is one thing I learned in UL is a lot of times I was overbuilding. And nothing wrong with overbuilding. We do want our panels to last. But sometimes I was grossly overbuilding because of all this misinformation I had. Now, there were some things I was definitely deficient on. And probably the biggest one was labeling. And I don't mean the UL label. I mean labeling in general because there's a lot of little things that need to be labeled and have specific ways that they need to be labeled. And probably even today when my UL inspector comes, if he's going to get on me about something, it'll be some little labeling thing that he just always wants to see me do a little better at. Let's see, uh, short circuit current ratings. That, that was a big one. We did not do short circuit current ratings on our panels. And that is a requirement. And that's an important requirement. And it is not nearly as difficult to do. Short circuit current ratings are actually on our list to do a video on. And we're going to walk through the various ways to do it. I'm trying to think what else was really a shocker. Oh, when you can use supplemental versus branch circuit protection. And I see panels all the time that this is done wrong in, and we did it wrong in so many panels. But that one was surprising. We're gonna do a video on that. But supplemental protection gets used a lot of times when branch circuit protection is required. And the flip side, branch circuit protection is used when supplemental protection would work. And that, that's a waste of money. So that's a, that was a big shocker, no pun intended. Let's see, along with the short circuit protection was the nameplate. We didn't really put nameplates, and we put all the warnings, and our drawings were accurate, but having a nameplate on the side of the panel where an electrician or anybody can walk up and figure out that here's the voltage it is, here's the amps that it is, here is the short circuit current rating, here are the drawings, here's who built it, things like that. You know, that's, a lot of it is just all the little details, so that. But if I had to say one thing after you make the phone call to UL, it is all the little labeling and documentation details. Another one would be the enclosure rating. I think a lot of us get that one wrong. And even now, okay, I, I usually will have to look at the chart. I mean, we've got certain cookie cutter panels and I know exactly what they are, but knowing that mixing a NEMA 4X panel with this particular part and this particular part may not exactly equal what you think it is. That, that, one, that one can get a little tricky. So that's a chart I usually keep pretty close to me. In fact, that would probably make a good video is really how you figure out enclosure ratings. Let's see, what other misinformation though? Now I'll tell you one I hear from non-UL panel builders that is complete misinformation is They'll say, well, we've had this panel inspected one time, and we always built the same panel, so these don't need inspected. Well, first, chances are, and I will use this loosely, but chances are they've never had that panel inspected. And if you do get a field panel inspection done by UL, that in no way gives you some magical checkbox to build another one. If you get a UL field inspection, that means that UL came in, they looked at your drawings, they looked at the panel, they verified everything, they verified torque and lots of other things that I'm probably missing, and they have deemed that that specific panel meets UL specifications. Not that your design does, or that your building method does, or anything else. It's only that panel that they looked at and I'll say that probably most panel builders are, who say this are really trying to dance around the fact that they're not a UL panel shop. Let's see, are there any other big misses? Oh, I tell you, a really big miss is not using a class two power supply where really a design requires a class two power supply. 
because a 24 volt power supply is not magically a class two power supply. And so there's one, because really once you get to a class two, we'll say that the rules are a little more laxed. So in a lot of cases, our goal is to get to class two as quickly as possible. One, just to ease all the UL pressure, but also to make a safer panel. But you'll go in and you may see 24 volt, 500 watt power supply and somebody's calling that a class two. Well, no, that's, that's not a class two power supply just because it's 24 volt. Let's see, components, that's another one that I hear a lot about. Well, you know, you gotta have all these special components if you're UL certified. We, you know, we just don't wanna waste all the money with that cost. If you actually get looking, like we went through the class and then we came back and really started evaluating what we were using and what we were able to use. And there were almost no parts that we couldn't use. In fact, you know, the one that sticks out with me is we were using a certain brand of ferrule and we were not using the approved ferrule crimper for that ferrule. And those are the things that, you know, UL is like, no, if you're gonna use this ferrule, you need to use their crimper. But really, I can't think of a single product that we were using that all of a sudden it was like, oh, we cannot use that anymore. Now we did have some environmental rating things. That was probably the big one is UL, doesn't accept IP ratings. And that's, that's a little shocking for a lot of people. So you may have the most beautifully sealed device that has an IP67, IP68, maybe an IP69 rating, but in UL, you can only list it as a type one, which means pretty much you can't stick your finger in it. So that one was definitely a little shocking. Again, no pun intended. Now, I hadn't really talked about money. Now, there is money involved with this, but if you do it right, I think you will find benefit in it. So you're going to get, or at least if you're our size, you're going to get inspected quarterly. And yeah, every time they come, there is a bill that comes with them. Well, it's, don't, don't think of it like, I, I don't know, well, I don't even know if you should think of OSHA this way. But, you know, a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, the inspector's coming, the inspector's coming, everybody hide. Don't think of it that way. You're paying for them to be there. You're paying for them to show you something. You're paying for them to help you make a better panel. And if you will think of it that way, if you will ask them questions, don't let them come in, look at a panel, check a couple boxes and leave. You, you need to use them. <laughs> for a better word. There should be some learning opportunity while they are present that when they leave, you can say, I am gonna make a better panel from now on. And if you'll think of it that way, there's really not a lot of cost associated with it. But all right, going back to Carol's original question is, what are the big obstacles? Well, first, call and go ahead and just start the process. Peeling back the layers of the all the different codes and regulations and everything and getting it down to what's actually required. Labeling. Labeling's definitely one that you'll probably have to improve. Short circuit current calculations. Uh, that's probably one that uh, I would venture to say that most people are either doing wrong or not at all. And then yeah, probably the branch versus supplemental circuit protection. Those will be the big ones. But again, the big one is calling UL. It's free to make the phone call and they are really helpful even before you ever write the first check. And it has been a big benefit to our company and probably will be to yours too. So I hope that helps you out, Carol. And any follow-up questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.